Boris Johnson's plan to provide 20,000 new prison places by 2026 was due to be completed five years late and billions over budget, a scathing assessment by Whitehall's spending watchdog said yesterday. Those are the facts. Right? It was Boris Johnson's plan. He announced it. He probably did a lap of honour and claimed that he'd already achieved it, like he did with the hospitals. Those are the facts. Daily Mail manages to write 30 paragraphs today, 20 paragraphs today, without mentioning once that this failure is a failure of the last government. Greetings, dear viewers. We appreciate your presence here today. We're embarking on a journey of truth-seeking, navigating the turbulent waters of media coverage. Our compass, a critical eye and an open mind. Our destination, the Daily Mail's coverage of a diverse range of events from the royal couple to political affairs. If you crave enlightening content and insightful analysis, you're in the right place. Today we delve into a critical analysis of the Daily Mail's coverage of various events. Stay tuned. The Daily Mail, a prominent British tabloid, has been in circulation since 1896. This publication's legacy spans over a century during which it has become a household name reaching millions of readers daily. The Daily Mail's influence is undeniable, shaping public opinion on a wide range of topics, from politics to pop culture, from its inception to the present day. In the early days, the Daily Mail was a pioneer, introducing many innovations that are now standard in the world of print journalism. It was the first British paper to feature a crossword puzzle and the first to offer an advice column. These elements, combined with its sensational headlines and gripping stories, quickly made it a popular choice amongst readers. As the years went by, the Daily Mail continued to grow and evolve, always keeping up with the times. It expanded its coverage to include not only national, but also international news. And it was one of the first papers to launch a fully digital edition. Yet beneath this glossy exterior, the Daily Mail's reputation has been marred by controversy. One such controversy revolves around its coverage of events. The Daily Mail has been known to sensationalise stories, often prioritising shock value over factual accuracy. This penchant for the dramatic has led to accusations of fear-mongering and misinformation. Furthermore, the Daily Mail's coverage has often been criticised for its bias. The tabloid has been accused of promoting certain viewpoints while blatantly disregarding others. This biased reporting has not only skewed public opinion, but has also contributed to a polarised society. In recent years, these issues have come to a head, with prominent figures like James O'Brien calling out the Daily Mail for its coverage. He specifically criticised the paper's handling of the prison overcrowding crisis and accused it of misrepresenting facts to suit its narrative. However, the Daily Mail's coverage has often been called into question for its inaccuracies. The question remains, how does the Daily Mail's legacy of influence weigh against its controversial approach to news coverage? As we delve deeper into this topic, it's important to remember that the impact of media on society is profound and far-reaching. One of the most notable instances of the Daily Mail's controversial reporting involves Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. This royal couple has been at the epicentre of the tabloid's relentless coverage, often characterised by inaccuracies and bias. The Daily Mail's portrayal of Meghan Markle in particular has been subject to intense scrutiny. Sensationalised headlines and skewed narratives have painted a picture of her that is far from reality. The Duchess of Sussex, a humanitarian and advocate for women's rights, has been reduced to a caricature by the tabloid, often depicted as a villain in the royal family saga. Prince Harry, too, has been a target of the Daily Mail's coverage. His decisions, from stepping back from royal duties to moving across the Atlantic, have been met with relentless criticism. The tabloid has not hesitated to question his motives, often ignoring the prince's own statements about wanting to protect his family from the intrusive media attention. Such coverage raises questions about the Daily Mail's commitment to fair and accurate reporting. The royal couple's story has been twisted and turned, manipulated to fit a narrative that sells papers but does not reflect the truth. This is not just about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, it's about the role of media in society and the responsibility that comes with it. The Daily Mail's handling of the royal couple is a stark reminder of the power of the press and the potential damage it can inflict when wielded irresponsibly. Their treatment in the media has led to a global conversation about press ethics, privacy and the impact of relentless media scrutiny on individuals' lives. The Daily Mail's relentless reporting on the royal couple has been nothing short of a media onslaught. 
It is a sobering reminder of the need for responsible journalism and the importance of holding media outlets accountable for their reporting. The Daily Mail's inaccurate reporting extends beyond the royal family and into the realm of politics. It's a phenomenon that seems to have seeped into the very fabric of this publication, a willingness to bend the truth and, in some cases, to completely distort it. Let's take, for instance, the case of Boris Johnson and the prison overcrowding crisis. The Daily Mail's coverage of this particular issue was riddled with inaccuracies. They painted a picture that was far from the reality, a narrative that was not only misleading but also harmful. The reality was that the prison overcrowding crisis was due to a plethora of factors, including the government's policies, lack of funding and systemic issues within the criminal justice system. However, the Daily Mail chose to place the blame solely on the shoulders of Boris Johnson, a convenient scapegoat, but far from the truth. This is not to say that Boris Johnson was without fault. However, the Daily Mail's portrayal of him as the sole architect of the crisis was a gross oversimplification. It was a clear attempt to manipulate public opinion, to create a villain where there were many contributing factors at play. James O'Brien, a prominent British journalist, has been one of the most vocal critics of the Daily Mail's coverage. He stated it was Boris Johnson's plan. He announced it. He probably did a lap of honour and claimed that he already achieved it. O'Brien's words highlight the Daily Mail's tendency to create narratives that fit their agenda, regardless of the truth. The Daily Mail's coverage of political events often lacks accuracy and objectivity. They choose sensationalism over truth, drama over facts. This is not just an issue of journalistic ethics, but one of public trust. When a major publication such as the Daily Mail chooses to distort the truth, it undermines the public's faith in the media. As James O'Brien points out, the Daily Mail's coverage of political events often lacks accuracy and objectivity. It's a reminder that we should always scrutinise the information we consume and question the narratives presented to us. The Daily Mail's pattern of inaccurate and biased reporting has serious implications. It's not just about the reputations of public figures like Harry and Meghan or the way political events such as Boris Johnson's policies are portrayed. It's about the potential erosion of trust in journalism, a pillar of our democratic society. When a media outlet repeatedly distorts the truth, it undermines the public's confidence in the media as a whole. It fosters a climate of skepticism and cynicism where every news story is met with suspicion. This can lead to apathy and ultimately to a disengagement from the important societal issues that affect us all. Moreover, this pattern of misinformation can fuel divisiveness. It can create false narratives that pit us against each other, instead of fostering understanding and unity. It's a reminder that we all need to be vigilant and critical consumers of news. We must not take every headline at face value. Instead, we should strive to understand the context, to question the sources, and to seek out multiple perspectives. We should also hold media outlets accountable for their reporting, demanding accuracy and fairness. In this digital age where information is readily available at our fingertips, we have the power to challenge and change the narrative. We have the power to demand better from our news providers. Remember, it's essential to question and verify the information we consume. Thank you for joining us today. This brings us to the end of our analysis of the Daily Mail's coverage. We've journeyed together through the labyrinth of misinformation, dissecting the Daily Mail's narratives and their disproportionate focus on certain individuals and events. In our discussion, we've highlighted the relentless and often misleading coverage of Harry and Meghan, a narrative that appears to be driven more by sensationalism than by a commitment to facts. Our exploration has revealed how the Daily Mail's reporting, far from being harmless tabloid fodder, can have far-reaching impacts on the individuals involved and the public's perception of them. We've also delved into the political realm, examining the Daily Mail's coverage of Boris Johnson's tenure as Prime Minister. In particular, we've scrutinised their handling of the prison overcrowding crisis, where they have been accused of misrepresentation and a lack of balance in their reporting. As we conclude, it's important to remember that the media plays a crucial role in shaping our understanding of the world. It's therefore imperative that we approach news with a critical eye, questioning the motives behind the headlines and the accuracy of the information presented. We hope that this video has provided you with some food for thought and encouraged you to scrutinize the media you consume more closely.
As we navigate this complex media landscape, remember that the power to discern truth from fiction lies in your hands. In the spirit of fostering a community of informed viewers, we invite you to engage with us. If you found this video insightful, do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to join us in future explorations, hit the subscribe button. And if you think others might benefit from this analysis, don't hesitate to share the video. We appreciate the time you've taken to join us today. Your participation in this conversation is invaluable, and we look forward to continuing this journey of discovery together. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Until next time, stay informed.